Hello and welcome back to the course on physics for engineers. This is now the last lesson for chapter 13, magnetostatics. So let's first review. So in the previous lesson, we have discussed about the force on current carrying conductors. And it's just uh, basically the, uh, the cross product of the current and the external uh, magnetic field with the magnitude of ILB sine phi. So this again follows the right hand rule. Uh, if the current is your pointing finger and the magnetic field is your middle finger, then the direction for your thumb is the force, I cross V. So for the last lesson of this chapter, we will be uh, talking about uh, force, the magnetic force on current loops and also the magnetic torque. Force, magnetic force and the magnetic torque on current loops. So this is basically a current loop. So in this case, you have a current uh, flowing uh, counterclockwise. So in this segment here, current is going in that direction. In that segment, it's going in that direction. In this segment, it's going in that direction. In this segment, current is moving uh, down. Now, if you expose this to an external magnetic field and you take the I, uh, you take the force, you calculate the force in each of the segment. So for here, for this segment, magnetic field is actually upward in this case. So you have I cross B. This is the force on this segment. Uh, on this segment, you have I cross B. The, the, the current will actually be, or the force will be actually in that direction. In this segment, the force will be actually in this direction. And in this segment, the force is actually in the opposite direction. So on a current loop, the total force is actually zero. If you have a uniform external, a constant, or uniform external magnetic uh, field. So the, the magnetic force is zero. There's no magnetic force on a current loop. But if you will notice, there will be a, even though these two forces here are equal, this force and this force, but uh, they will try to make the loop turn. So there is what we call a magnetic torque. So for instance, uh, this eraser, even though there will be a force on the upper part of the eraser in that direction, and there will also be another force on the lower part of the eraser in the opposite direction, even though these two forces are the same, but this will cause the eraser to turn because the force are acted on different uh, points of the loop. So this force here acts on this point of the loop, and this force here acts on this side of the loop, and that will cause the loop to turn. So if you have a solenoid or any current loop and you expose it to an external magnetic field, then that loop will turn. So the force exerted in the current loop or say a solenoid creates what we call torque, a magnetic torque. So the torque is basically the di magnetic dipole moment cross B where the magnetic dipole moment is just the number of turns of the loop, the current in the loop, and the cross-sectional area of the loop. So the cross-sectional area of the loop uh, vector, the direction of this vector is the same direction as the magnetic dipole moment. Uh, the magnetic dipole moment or the area vector of the loop, of any loop, is always perpendicular to the loop. So in this case, if this is our loop, then the area vector is in this direction, perpendicular to the surface of the loop. And that's also the direction of the mu, the magnetic dipole moment. So basically, the magnitude of this one will be the magnitude of mu, Nia, magnitude of B, uh, just B, Sign uh, between the uh, sign between the angle between the mu magnetic dipole moment and the uh, magnetic field. So in this case, this is phi. The angle between mu, the magnetic dipole moment vector, which is the same direction as the area vector, and the magnetic field. So NIB sine phi. Okay. Uh, what's the application of uh, torque on current loops? So you have the DC motor. So if you have a loop and you connect your loop, say, to a battery, and you expose the loop to a magnet, that magnet will actually, uh, sorry, that loop will actually turn. So if we did a uh, face-to-face uh, laboratory activity, I will actually be asking you to make a DC motor, such as this one. So you connect, uh, you buy some, what we call magnet wires, 
and then you connect uh, the magnet wires to a you make a loop out of the magnet wires you connect it to a say a 9 volt battery and then there's a magnet here there's a very small magnet this is a neodymium magnet these are very powerful magnets more powerful than uh, bar magnets made of iron so this is neodymium magnet it's a very strong magnet so because of this magnet, magnetic field of this magnet and like the current in the loop it will cause the loop to turn so that's this is actually the DC motor the basic principle in any motor that you have the motor in your cars the motor in your motorcycles the motor in your electric fans any motor the concept of the DC motor is just basically this one a loop you connect it to a battery and then you have a magnet so those are the three basic elements of a motor a magnet a battery for the current and a current loop or a loop a wire a magnetic wire a loop so that one so another of course another application this is a magnetic resonance imaging as i've mentioned in the previous lesson so we are made up of tiny dipole moments uh tiny magnet magnets in our body and basically those tiny magnets uh loop or turn around whenever they're exposed to a magnetic field so let's have an example so magnetic torque on a circular coil so you have a circular coil with three turns it's a circular coil it lies on a horizontal plane where the magnetic field is uniform so basically you have a circular coil and then you have you, are, you expose it to an external magnetic field so the coil carries a current of 5 amperes find the magnet, magnitude and direction of the magnetic torque on the loop so this is the area vector and this is also the direction of the magnetic dipole moment. It's perpendicular to the surface of the loop. Again, huh? it's always perpendicular to the surface of the loop. So in this in this uh, case, the magnetic field is on the surface of the loop. So meaning the angle between the magnetic field and the area vector or the magnetic dipole moment vector is 90 degrees. So mu cross B. Mu, you're pointing finger, B, your magnetic field. So therefore, the direction of the torque in this case is into the pitch. So for the magnitude, it's NIAB sine phi. This is just uh, 90 degrees, so this is just basically one. Three turns, five ampere current, then the area of the loop is a circle, so it's pi r squared. So the radius of this loop is 0 0.05 meters. So you have uh, the area, pi r squared, the radius is 0 0.05 meters. Uh, magnetic field, uh, 1.20 Tesla. And then sine 90 degrees, so you will get a torque, magnitude torque, magnitude of the torque of 0 0.40 newton meter. And of course, by virtue of right hand rule, uh, we have determined that the direction is into the pitch. So if the direction is into the pitch, meaning you have a torque that's into the pitch, then the direction of the rotation is uh, clockwise. So clockwise rotation. Out of the pitch, torque means counterclockwise rotation. Okay. So that's it. That's the end of this lesson and basically the end of this chapter, the chapter on magnetostatics. So we still have two chapters left. The next chapter will be all about uh, electromagnetism. We will now combine electricity and magnetism. So I will see you again on the next chapters. Bye-bye.